Hello and welcome back to Irish Medical Training Solutions. This is our second video in a series of first aid videos in the home environment. As we discussed last week, we talked about uh, the primary survey. We also talked about scene safety and we talked about calling an ambulance as well. So remember the most important thing is the primary survey. So we're talking about airway, how to check an airway, breathing, what to do for a breathing rate. If you remember from last week's uh, video, our breathing rates are normally 12 to 20 breaths per minute. And when we're doing a pulse check, it's normally 60 to 100 beats per minute. So tonight's video, what we're going to be talking about is the sample history in the OPQRST and a few other little bits. And at the end of the video, we're going to do a scenario to put all of what we've learned together so far. Next, we're going to talk about the sample history. So the sample history is a mnemonic we normally use uh, for dealing with casualties as well. And we use it both in the ambulance service and in, in pre-hospital in first aid courses. So it's not specific to Ireland, but different countries around the world have their own different little mnemonics. And we'll talk about that later on. So the first one is signs and symptoms. So S, you can see it up here. So the thing about it is a sign is something you can see and a symptom is something that some patient will tell you. So if I turned around and I said, oh my God, I have a pain in my head. That's both a sign and a symptom. Next one is A for allergies. Are you allergic to anything? Medications, um, animal hair, anything of that nature. The next one then is M for medications. Are you on any medications or any kind of a holistic medication? So it's very important that we know all these things in the eventuality of somebody has to go to the hospital. P then is, you can see it here, is past medical history. Have you been in hospital lately? Any kind of recent surgery? That's most important pertinent information in the eventuality that you have to go to hospital. L, last oral intake. So what did you have to eat lately? Did you eat something today? If you didn't eat maybe in a day or day and a half, we might be finding that somebody is maybe a diabetic or their sugars are low. And we have a video coming on that very shortly. And E is the events. Events are basically what you were doing beforehand. Were you cutting the grass? Were you going for a long walk? If you had something to eat, um, something of that nature. Now we're going to talk about the OPQRST. And we're dealing with somebody who predominantly has a bit of pain and you'll see in our future videos what we're talking about. We're also going to do a demonstration later on on OPQRST with a patient. So the first thing that we're talking about is O is onset. When did this happen? What went on? The next one is provocation. Does anything make it worse or does it make it better? So ideally, if you're dealing with somebody like with angina, next thing they get a sudden onset and you're asking the question, does anything provoke it, make it worse? So, and they'll tell you maybe walking around the place does. Next one is the Q. So we're talking about quality, quality of pain. Remember, everyone's perception of pain is totally different, especially if you're dealing with a small child, a three or four year old child, or if you're dealing with a 55 year old male, it really doesn't matter. So we're talking about quality and get them to describe the type of pain. R is, does it radiate anywhere? So normally what happens, a lot of people, they get a pain in their chest uh, for our future videos and they get a pain down their left arm or into their jaw. So that'd be a radiating type pain as well. Severity then is another one. The pain goes from zero being no pain to 10 being the worst pain ever. So everyone has a different category, as you know yourself. And the next one then is time. When did this exactly happen here? So here we are, we're going to put it all together now in this particular video. So the first thing I'm going to do is look for scene safety. So is the scene safe? Do I see any hazards around, any smoke fumes or anything, any electrical cables around the patient? I don't. Next thing I'm going to do is come along and shake and shout, hello, hello, can you hear me? Hello? Lads, would somebody call an ambulance, ring 999 and get me an ambulance straight away? So the ambulance has been called, and as a result of that now, the next thing, I know it's not a trauma situation, it's a medical situation. So the next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to seat the patient up, I'm going to bring their head back up like this, I can hold it here, now I know the airway is open and I can hear air coming in and out. So the airway is clear and patent at the moment. The next thing I'm going to do then is check the patient's breathing rate. So I put my hand on here like we discussed in the first video, and our breathing rate here is normally between 12 to 20 breaths per minute. Currently at the moment here, I imagine that the breathing rate is 16 breaths a minute. As a result of that now, because my patient is unresponsive, I'm always going to check for a carotid pulse. So I'm going to go in here. If you remember from the first video again, our, our pulse rates are normally 60 to 100 beats a minute. And I have that, and the next thing then I've got to check uh, skin color temperature and cap refill as well. So I'm going to look at the cap refill. Now the patient is sitting up. Now for the purposes of it then, what happens is our patient wakes up here. And I'm going to ask the patient, so signs and symptoms. I know the patient is sitting up. Have you any pain really anywhere at the moment? No. 
Okay. Are you allergic to any anything, any medications, anything of that nature? Uh, no, no medications. Any allergic to anything at all? I'm allergic to animal hair. Right. So we've done the S. We'll do the A. Let's do the M. So you're on any medications currently at the moment? No. Do you take anything for your allergies? No. So we'll go for P next. So we have S A M P. Let's talk about P. Past medical history? No. Have you been sick lately or at the doctor lately or anything no. of that nature? No. Doctor. So S A M P. L is the next one. So last oral intake. When did you have something last to eat? About two hours ago. Okay, and the events. What Can you remember what happened to you prior to going unresponsive here? No, I can't remember. Okay, so that's absolutely fine there. So when we're looking at it then, so we'll imagine then that the patient has a pain somewhere, we'll say in his elbow. The OPQRST is going to come into play then. So the onset then is I know that he said, uh, what happened to you at all? Did you fall? Or? I fell. Okay, how long ago did you fall? An hour ago. Right, so we know that he fell. So does anything make it worse or better? When I move it, it's sore. Right, okay, so the whole thing is that we won't move it. So we've onset, we've provocation. Quality, so can you tell me about the quality of pain? What kind of pain is it? It's around a 6 out of 10. Well, so that's your severity, but the quality is a dull, sharp. Sharp. It's a sharp pain. So it's a sharp pain, and we're talking it's about 6 out of 10. And the time, can you remember what time this happened? Four o'clock, About four o'clock and it is now nine o'clock in the night, so five hours ago. So the thing is what we're going to do is get the patient to sit here, relax. Remember, we did call an ambulance initially, so we are wait for the ambulance to come on, and the reason being is because our patient is unconscious. So what can we do in the process of waiting for the ambulance to come? We can keep rechecking the vital signs, making sure that we check the breathing rate. We can actually bring the arm up to check for um, the respiratory rate. And we can also do a pulse check as well and cap refill. And most important here with this particular hand here as well, the fact that it is injured, we're going to do maybe the cap refill and keep an eye on it. And we'll talk in later videos how we're going to immobilize that injured part. Get out a piece of paper, write down the patient's name, uh, address, air code, date of birth, all the stuff that you might think is pertinent to us. Have a little bag ready as well so that will occupy people's mind as well because if this happens at home and some people are not trained in first aid that they may get small bit panicky but the whole thing is that we know the patient is conscious we know the patient is alert and the patient is doing okay at this moment in time so we have nothing to worry about okay so in that part we did it with a patient assessment so lots of people are going to be querying why didn't i move the patient to the ground uh, lots of people come up with that equation all the time over the weeks we're going to have totally different scenarios and i'm going to show you different things about managing the patient so if i come in as a paramedic and i find the patient sitting in the seat like this i open his airway he was breathing he had a great pulse his breathing rate would say was 16, 18 breaths a minute and his pulse was nice as well. He has good perfusion and cap refill, so why would I lift him to the ground? If you notice when we arrived in that the patient was slumped between two chairs and sitting up, so I knew the patient was safe, so I'm going to stay with this patient until such time as the ambulance arrives. If I find that the patient becomes a bit lightheaded or groggy or something like that, I'm going to actually move him to the ground or I'm going to move him to the couch. Another thing too about moving to the floor, be very careful as well, be very careful of your back, most important. Now, I'd be well able to manage this patient, but if you were at home and you're managing somebody of my size, I'm not light by any standards. So the thing is, we have to be careful of our back, don't we? As I mentioned in the first video, the most important person here is yourself. So let's do a recap. Okay, so over the last two videos, we've talked about our primary survey. We talk about in tonight's the secondary survey and most important scene safety. So let's take about the scenario we did there a few seconds ago. First thing we do is we arrive in and we do scene safe, don't we? We look all around us and make sure then if you're downtown or at a bar or a club or something of that nature, you see somebody injured on the ground, be very careful about your situation awareness and look around to make sure that you stay safe. So when we came into our patient, we did scene safety. The next thing then we shake and shout and then we call for an ambulance. I got the patient while the patient was sitting here. I sat him up in the chair and I opened his airway. The airway was clear and patent as you saw. Next thing I checked the breathing. The breathing rate is normally 12 to 20 breaths per minute. So his breathing rate was in around 16 so I knew it was absolutely fine. I checked his pulse then and remember for an unconscious casualty I always go to their carotid. If they're conscious you can do a radial pulse. Uh, while we were doing that then uh, suddenly the patient became awake. And we started talking about the sample history. So remember, signs and symptoms, which is something we can see. So we have the S, we have the A for the allergies. S-A-M-P, so past medical history. 
S-I-M-P-L-E. So last oral intake. S-I-M-P-L-E as well. That we're talking about events. What happened to the patient. So when we were talking to the patient, then suddenly the patient uh, told us that they had a pain in the right arm. So we asked them what happened to it. Then we asked them the, the provocation. Did anything make it worse or better? We talked about the quality of pain. So the patient said it was a sharp type pain. Uh, I asked them did it radiate anywhere? It didn't. Severity then on the pain was anything between zero being no pain, 10 being the worst pain ever, and then the time and the onset. Now these are all lovely to remember here tonight and we talked about as well about um, what to do when they we're waiting for the ambulance. You know, your family members to get a bag together, write down as much information as you can for the ambulance en route as well. But in the eventuality that you can't remember that, um, that's why these videos are here. Watch the video again a couple of times, write it down, make a little mnemonic, put it up in the fridge, what questions I would ask. But remember, when we come into a house uh, from an ambulance point of view, we're going to talk to the family member and ask them how were they feeling, what was the story with the patient, and give us your version of the story. You don't have to remember the sample history if you don't want to, but if you could write it down, but I will get all the information I can out of you, and so will all the EMS personnel as well. So if you liked our video, please give us an old like and give us an old subscribe and look forward to the next video. So our next videos are going to be coming straight into scene situations. As we remember, we keep uh, pushing you back to video one and video two to learn the primary secondary survey, as well as the sample no PQRST. So our next videos are going to get very interesting into the delving in of different scenarios. So over the coming months, we're going to have a pediatric uh, month coming on very shortly where we're dealing with nothing but paediatrics. We'll have outside emergencies, inside emergencies, and something that may happen in the garden with a lawnmower and different kind of things. So I really look forward to your support as well. Another thing too as well, I'd like to thank everyone that has liked, shared, liked our Facebook page, liked our website, and the, the encouraging comments over the last couple of weeks have been outstanding. So thank you very much. So we hope to deliver some nice products to you over the next couple of weeks. Thank you.